On page 36 is a description of ventricular tachycardia versus supraventricular tachycardia with aberrancy. And so uh, this is where the 12 lead can be helpful in uh, making that distinction if you're uncertain. Now, um, a fundamental principle with the wide complex tachycardia is, is that if um, you're dealing with a wide complex regular tachycardia and you're not certain the origin, then we treat it like ventricular tachycardia. So we assume it's VTAC. And um, sometimes it's helpful if you look at uh, other criteria such as uh, the, the age of the patient. Uh, VTAC is more common in um, an elderly patient uh, when we're dealing with wide complex regular tachycardias. If you're dealing with an elderly patient and you suspect it's SVT, they likely have a history of SVT and or are on medication for SVT. So this is information that would be important to elicit. But here's some ECG criteria. So some criteria that favor ventricular tachycardia. If um, there's a notch or a slurred area in the downslope of the QRS in V1 or V2, that favors ventricular tachycardia. If the distance from the onset of the QRS, which is here, uh, to the tip of the uh, S wave in V1, this is called the S nadir, N-A-D-I-R, is greater than 0 0.06 second. That's one and a half small square. So basically, if it's uh, approximately two small squares, that favors ventricular tachycardia. And any Q wave in V6 would favor VTAC. Now, having said that, we don't always see notching or slurring of V1. We don't always see Q waves. Uh, but these, if these criteria do exist, then they both favor ventricular tachycardia. Um, the criteria that favors SVT with aberrancy, aberrancy meaning uh, abnormal conduction uh, resulting in a wide QRS, would be uh, a very narrow R wave in V1 and a sleek downstroke with any, without any slurring. So the distance between the onset of the QRS and then the tip of the S wave is very short, less than 0 0.06 second. Um, also, if you see any bundle branch block pattern in V5 and V6 without any Q waves, that also favors um, a bundle branch block. And, and so consequently, that would be a supraventricular tachycardia with aberrancy or with a uh, bundle branch block. So. Other indicators that favor VT, uh, concordance, and that means um, where all QRSs in V1 to V6 are deflected in the same direction. And sometimes you'll see uh, virtual concordance where you'll see it in, uh, say, five out of six leads uh, where they're all deflected upward or they're all deflected negatively. So concordance uh, is supportive of um, VT. Let's see, there we go. Um, AV dissociation is supportive of VT. So in about 50% of ventricular tachycardias where there's an ectopic impulse down here and the ventricle is firing, let, let's say, 180, and um, the SA node continues to fire, it may fire at uh, 60, we'll say. 50% um, of VTAC, this wave of depolarization uh, would cancel out the SA node, but in about 50% of uh, VTACs as well, um, what will happen is the wave of depolarization from the ectopic focus will reach here, and this wave of depolarization will cause the atria to uh, depolarize and contract as well. And so consequently, we see this wide complex tachycardia with uh, actual P waves that march through that are firing at a slower rate than the ventricular complexes, and they march through. The other thing to look at clinically is look at the patient's neck veins. If uh, the patient has AV dissociation and a wide complex tachycardia, uh, there's a good chance they'll have irregular jugular venous distension. Because what happens is um, if the atria are contracting against closed AV valves while the ventricles are contracting, then blood backs up into the neck and you get this, these irregular jugular venous distensions. Uh, and finally, as I mentioned in the first slide, uh, if you have a wide comp complex regular tachycardia and you're not sure of the origin, then it's VTAC until proven otherwise. So here's an example of VTAC, and uh, we have a wide complex tachycardia that's regular. We have no discernible P waves, and we have concordance in V1 through V6. Not quite V1, but uh, fairly close enough. And here's an example of SVT with aberrancy where we have this sleek downstroke of the S wave, and we have this bundle branch block pattern in V5. So this would be an SVT with a left bundle branch block.